Let us now look at managing exception policies. That's lesson three. We have a couple of objectives within this lesson, topics on ex automatic exclusions and the exceptions policy itself. Let's look at the automatic exclusions. Within the set product itself, there are certain automatic exclusions for certain types of software. Uh, Microsoft Exchange and Forefront, Active Directory Domain Controller and some semantic products will automatically be excluded if found to be running on one of the systems that the SEP client is running on. The SEP client will monitor these areas and check for these systems or these products uh, regularly. The exceptions policy. So managing exceptions, we can create an exceptions policy to make exceptions to all scans. We could uh, remove certain scans for uh, files for auto-protect or uh, download insight, for instance, or just the application control or sonar. Let's look at how we configure those. So a number of different exception types for Windows clients exist. We have the exception listed on the left-hand side of this table with the description of the type on the right. So we could make an exception type for a certain application to monitor and see how the client actually handles that application once it's been detected. We can exclude certain files and extensions or folders or known risk areas. Let's look at how we set these up. So to create an exceptions policy, we need to go to add an exceptions policy and select the policy to add, give it a name. And we can then go into the exceptions types on step three and have a look at the overview. It's noted that only one exceptions policy can be applied per group. So under the exceptions, we can now start to add in the exceptions that we wish to make. So in the main box, we choose the Add and select either Windows Exceptions or Mac Exceptions. The Windows Exceptions has a lot longer list than the Mac. The Mac can only, set, can only set certain extensions of risk exceptions for files or folder. So let's have a look at the Windows Exceptions. We could add them in from the uh, applications that are being gathered information on from the SEPM. Now this will rely on you having learned applications set on. We can select them from our query list and choose to add as an application to monitor directly from here. And we can choose the action to take. If we don't have application learning turned on, we could manually add in the application to monitor. So here we can add it in, being specifying the actual application. And we could review the applications list and define the action to uh, take when the application is displayed. So we're adding in the application control exception here. Application control can affect the application performance, so you may wish to make some exceptions to this. Here we're adding in an extension, file, folder, or known risk exception. Note that it's worth uh, noting that if you add a security uh, risk exception, it should be for a trusted file. Adding trusted web domain exceptions. Here we can add in a web domain to trust. This would require the download insight to be enabled. And we can add in certain tamper protection exceptions. For the Mac, as I said, we only have the one option, security risk exceptions for file and folder. We can add that in with prefixes or the file and folder path. We can also add in exceptions from certain log events. Here we can see the exception type on the left and the log type that would be accepted. We can add an exception from the sonar log. Here we're selecting it from the monitors page within the SEPM and adding it in directly. 
You can set up client restrictions. By default, clients are able to um, make exceptions to the exceptions. Um, obviously, the administrator exceptions always take precedence over the user exceptions. You can tick which ones the users are allowed to add exceptions to in this table. That brings us to the end of the exceptions lesson. We should have learned how to describe the automatic exclusions and how to create an exceptions policy.